So looking here at a plastic model of the heart, and this one is an oversized uh, heart, so if it looks big compared to my hand, so that's because it is. Um, what we can see to begin with on the superior aspect in red, we have the aorta. So we're looking there at the largest artery in the body. Actually, we're only seeing part of the aorta here, but uh, we can see where there where it leaves the heart. If, if, and if we add this other part um, of the model uh, to the back of the heart here, we can see that the aorta comes up from the heart and arches over and then travels down the back of the heart. So we can see more aorta here as well. So that's the aorta. We can see from an anterior point of view that we have now, just next to the aorta is another large artery leaving the heart. This one's leaving the right-hand side of the heart. This is the pulmonary trunk, which will then split into a couple of pulmonary arteries. So we can see one here, which is a right, uh, sorry, left pulmonary artery, and one here, which is longer, which is a right pulmonary artery there. So then we can see not much of an inferior vena cava. So if we look here, we can see that there's a vein coming into the bottom of the heart here. That's what's left on this model, or what's visible, of the inferior vena cava. And then coming superiorly into the same chamber that the inferior vena cava does, here we have the superior vena cava. Now the superior vena cava on this model, very short, because there are two vessels that come together to form the superior vena cava. So once they've come together, that's what you're looking at here is the, at the superior vena cava. Okay, so on this model short, on some of the other ones it's a bit bigger. So there are some of the major vessels. Then coming off, oh sorry, coming back into then the other side of the heart, the left atrium, here in red we have four pulmonary veins. Now Remember before when we looked at the pulmonary arteries, which we can see here, they're blue, and the veins are red. Now, so you just need to remember, with pulmonary vessels, the colouring is back to front to how it is with all the systemic vessels. So with systemic vessels, the, the arteries will be drawn and coloured on the models as red and the veins blue, but with the pulmonary ones, it's back to front. So the pul this is still a, a couple of arteries here that have thick walls, high pressure, blood leading away from the heart going to the lungs, but because the blood is deoxygenated in these vessels, they're painted blue. These ones are definitely veins, they have thin walls, they're under low pressure, the blood in them is going back towards the heart from the tissues, it's just that the blood in here is oxygenated, so they're painted red. So just remember, pulmonary vessels only, the colouring is back to front to what you might expect. All right, back to the aorta. Here from an anterior point of view, we can see a few branches coming off the top of the arch here. The first one we come across is the brachiocephalic trunk. So the brachiocephalic trunk is only fairly short. Then the middle one, the next one here, will be the left common carotid artery going up to the left-hand side of the head. And then this third one will be the left subclavian artery heading for the left upper limb. Now the brachiocephalic trunk is interesting. It's only short and just after where it's cut here on this model, it would split and it would split into the right common carotid, which would go up to the right side of the head, and the right subclavian, which would come over to the right upper limb. Now then, on this model, we can see one of the coronary arteries. We can see the right one. Now we can see it here coming off the aorta. And then we can see it running in the little septum here, little groove here in between the atrium and the ventricle. So this is right coronary artery. And if we just remove part of the wall of the right atrium there, we can see it a bit more clearly. So that's the right coronary artery. Now the left coronary artery comes off the aorta in here behind the pulmonary trunk. So we can't actually see it on this model. 
and then it travels behind the pulmonary trunk and then behind this part of the left atrium which is the left auricle and we can see some branches of it here and here but we can't actually see on this model any of the left coronary artery so and the last structure we can see on this model though um, that's on our list actually there's a couple more if we put the uh, anterior wall there of the right atrium back on we can see there's this little protrusion here that's the right auricle now the auricles are named auricle means ear like or ear shaped so this is meant to look like an ear as is this one this is the left auricle here they're meant to look like ears on this model they don't but if you look at them on this smaller model which we'll have a closer look at in a sec if you look at them here here we've got a right auricle and a left auricle they don't again they don't look much like ears now but that's what they're named for so seen from an internal point of view the auricles are supposed to look a little bit ear like so from an internal point of view that's where they get their name from so we can see them from an external point of view though so if there was a pin here that would be right auricle if there was one here that would be left auricle now fortunately though um, even though we can't see the left coronary artery here on this model we've got another one where most of the heart is see-through so most of the heart here I wouldn't be be putting any pins on but we can see the right coronary artery here so this much must be the right atrium up here right ventricle uh, down here this is the superior vena cava this is the aorta and we can be sure of that because we can see the coronary arteries coming off it so this is the aorta here this is the pulmonary trunk and of course it's been cut so that we can see the coronary arteries clearly so here's the right coronary artery here's the left and notice it's only short and then it splits into a couple of branches this is the left auricle and it's just been moved aside a little bit lifted up a little bit so that we can see this left coronary artery more clearly so this is where we can easily see it and pin it here on this model so make sure you have a close look at that one you don't need to know the names of any of the other branches just right and left coronary arteries now one last structure on this one and this one's a beauty here we've got the aorta and here we have the right pulmonary artery and in between them there's a structure here called the ligamentum arteriosum and it always um, makes me want to do a, a flick and a swish and pronounce it correctly um, ligamentum arteriosum it sounds like it should be the name of a spell what it is is just a little bit of connective tissue joining these two vessels but when you were a fetus it was called the ductus arteriosus and then it was an open blood vessel that allowed blood to travel between the systemic and pulmonary circulations which doesn't matter when you're a fetus because you're getting your oxygen from uh, your mother's blood you're not needing to keep the right and left sides of your heart or your circulation separate so yeah it was open but in an adult it's the ligamentum arteriosum usually between the right pulmonary artery and the aorta.